All right, everybody set? Okay, for, uh, first off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out here to, to, uh, the, the, this afternoon. I uh, just wanted to recap our season and then talk about, you know, the spring and summer in front of us and getting set for the uh, 15 and 16 season. Uh, you know, a after some reflection on this year, unfortunately, it, it did not end the way we would have liked to it. Have to, to have had it end, uh, but taking a step back, I, I, I can say I'm really proud of, of, of this group of young women for what we were able to ac accomplish, how players stepped up and took on new roles, and then how our seniors embraced our freshmen. I, I thought that was a key part of our success, to have a group of seniors that were as willing as they were to, to, to kind of show your, fr your freshmen the ropes, show them how it was to be done, how it's supposed to be done, and then to have those two freshmen step up and be our two leading scorers, I thought really showed the maturity of this basketball team. So going 27-7, and seven, uh, returning eight points from that Elite Eight game last year, I, I thought really spoke volumes for where our program is and where we're going. It's not one team. It's definitely we build a foundation here that we're going to continue to grow, continue to improve, and look forward to making deeper runs in the NCAA tournament because our ultimate goal here is to win a national championship. Hey, if anybody's got any questions, be happy to uh, – Talk about returning players, seniors. The senior class, though, you talked a lot about it. Look at four of the five finish in a top ten in the category of some statistical category. So, I mean, it takes it even further where I mean, they just meant so much on and off the floor. Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, when you look at them as individuals, they all had significant impacts to our program. Uh, you know, the one that I'm not sure is listed in any of the st statistical categories would be Shante Dyer, and that's just because she was injured. You know, at the end of that game the uh, other night, we, we, we had some laughs and some tears all at the same time because it, w it was the first time she had finished a season w w without being hurt. You know, and, and when you think about that, you go through four years of playing Division I college basketball. And she was here for five because she had, had the red shirt a year. And to just have one season that, that you could finish without being injured in some type of way, I, I think it speaks volumes for her, 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 her toughness, uh, her desire, and just her as a person. Because uh, I, I thought she had a great year for us and was a big part of our, of our success. Was it difficult to get the, the seniors to buy into the whole teaching the freshmen kind of thing? You, you commended them on how well they did it. Now, you know what? The seniors like to win. And, and I think, you know, as players, you, you really have to at times put aside your personal goals and figure out what's the best for the team. And, and they all realized we had two very special fre uh, freshmen that were going to be able to come in here from the get-go and play significant minutes for us. And I, I think when they realized that, they were like, hey, you know, the, these two right here can really help, help us win a lot of games. So I, I thought they embraced that. And the, the, the type of kids we have, you know, they're, uh, they're good kids. I don't worry about them. You know, I, I know they're, they're going to do what's right. And those seniors embraced the entire fr freshman class, but especially those two freshmen, Mar Mariah Moore, Maisha Hines Allen, you know, embrace them as saying, hey, you can help lead us. And they, and they did a great job of that. What do you want to see from Mariah and Maisha? Well, you know, I think Maisha really started to, 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 to taste that, you know, success there towards the end of the season. We, we need her to continue to play with passion, continue to show that, that aggressiveness like she did the entire NCAA tournament. Uh, and, and if she can do that on a consistent basis, it, it's really scary to think what she can do. Uh, we have a plan in place for her. Uh, she knows she has to work on her game. She's got to continue to work on her 15 to 18 foot jump shot. Uh, she, she's got to work on her ball handling. But 
you know, those, those, those are things that, that I think she'll embrace. She knows her free throw shoot, shooting also has to improve. And if she can improve individually, then we're going to only get that much better as a team. Mariah, we, we, we've sat down and discussed, you know, her field goal percentage need, need, needs to improve. Uh, would like to see her become a 37, 38% three-point shooter, which she, which she can easily do. She's just going to need a lot of reps. Uh, spending time in the gym. I think with the addition of some players for next year, you know, she's going to get a lot more shots that are probably going to be less contested because we're going to have some more kids that, that, that can create. And, and I think that's one thing that's going to help a lot of them get easier shots is when you can get to the basket and, and make a second defender slide over and guard you, it's going to, it's going to give somebody an open look. Uh, her free throw shooting was outstanding. You know, she's easily – going to be an 80 percent, 85 percent three-point shooter, I, I believe, for her career. Uh, she, she does a nice job of rebounding the, ba the ba basketball. And, you know, I, I'd like to see her cut down her turnover some. But as a freshman, to lead us in scoring and also get 121 assists for, for the year, I was, I was very impressed with that. Both those two seem to have a, a competitive streak that you look for. I mean, those, they seem to fit your mold of, of that's your type. Yeah, you know what? You, you, you have to have some heart. You, you have to hate to lose. You know, I tell kids all, all the time, I'm, I'm looking for players at times that hate to lose more than they like to win. Because you've, you've got to be able to play every possession like it's your last one. And that's what we're trying to, to teach these players, is don't play the scoreboard. Just play the clock. You've got 40 minutes to play a basketball game. Go out there every possession and give us everything you have. And we're making strides. Do we still have room to improve? Of course. But really, really excited about where we are and where we're going. After the shooting struggles from the three-point line this year, it had to be pretty welcome to see Aja win that McDonald's All-American game. It's nice. Uh, <laughs> no, no question about it. Uh, we have a few that will be coming in next year that are going to help us uh, solve a little bit of those problems. Uh, but I, I thought we handled that well th this year. You know, you, you have to know what your strengths are and know where your weaknesses are. And, and for us, shooting the basketball behind the three-point line was a weakness. In that Dayton date game, I think we went one for 15. You know, it, it's an area that, that we definitely knew coming into the year was going to be a problem. Uh, but instead of getting upset about it, we just try to figure out ways, okay, how can we become a team that doesn't have to rely on that three as much? And I thought we did a very good job of scoring in the paint, uh, making sure we executed in the half court, finding a way to get 15 to 18 foot shots instead of always having to rely on three pointers. What about uh, somebody like Amani? What do you want to see? She got better with her conditioning it seemed like this year. Her, her, her conditioning really improved. That, that, that's an area that I know she's, she's going to continue to work on. Uh, what I challenged her with, as we met yesterday, was just her knowledge of the game. You know, what Imani's always been able to do, even through high school, is just have success off her athleticism, off her, her pure strength. Well, now we're getting to, into situations when we start playing better and better teams where you've got to be basketball smart. And part of that comes from just watching games on TV. I challenge our players all the time, you know, watch games with the volume up so you can hear the commentators. Listen to when they're saying, hey, th this was a great play. Look how they d defended this. L look how they found the open player. Uh, use that as ways to learn the game. And, and, I, and I told Imani that. I Imani's a great student. She, she does fantastic in the, in the classroom. And I'm trying to get her to buy into – to put in as much time into studying basketball as she does some of her classwork, and I think she'll start to even see more success. Because uh, the, the one thing that, 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 that she does, and I've told her she's, she's got to work on, is per minute's play, she, she's, she's taking the most shots of anybody on our team. And, and I've told her that. I'm like, Imani, you just can't shoot it every time you touch it. We've got to figure out a way for you to know what you're doing with the ball if you're not going to shoot it. So, you know, she's in complete agreement with that. We're going to break down some more film for her, really show her some things that she did throughout the year that were well and things that she needs to work on.
As far as getting Courtney back, is she on track? <clears throat> and will you have her? Courtney's back. She's 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 good to go. She's been cleared. Uh, actually practiced the last probably month with us, uh, did some really good things. We're going to need her aggressiveness. The one thing Courtney's always done a great job of is rebounding the basketball. Uh, she's, she's got a nose for it. She knows how to go get it. And those are things that will really help us because we do lose Sha Shante Dyer. You lose Sharon Vales and Sarah Hammond, who I thought did a great job uh, of going and getting the, the basketball themselves. So. It's, good. it's going to be nice to have her for two seasons. Uh, then you've got Mariah back, My Maisha back. So we're, we're going to have some very solid returning players, and then we're going to have some uh, freshmen that are going to have to, to, to come in again and make an immediate impact for us. Did Erica show the improvement you want? I mean, she got some key minutes in the tournament. But there was still kind of maybe some up and downs with her. Was it more freshman than anything? Well, you know, I, I just had the opportunity to meet with her this morning. And, uh, you know, there, there are some things that she really has to, to, to go back and evaluate and figure out, is, is this what I want? Because it's, it, it, it's hard. I mean, it's, de it's definitely hard. She's got a little bit too much of a laid back personality on the court. And I've challenged her. I've told her, you know, that has to change. You can have a personality off the court and one on, on the court. Uh, but if you're passive, you're not going to be able to be successful at this, le at this level of play. So I've really just, as I do with all my players, I'm completely honest with, with them. Right now, she's got a lot of work to do. If, if she wants to be able to, to play and be an impact player and get minutes, she's got to change. And it's really 90% about her mentality. Uh, her skills are, are, are good, not, not great. But how she approaches the game has to change. You, you can't be passive. You can't let every, everybody come at you. You've got to be willing to throw the first punch. You've got to be willing to take it at people. And I thought Erica was always on her heels always just taking whatever anybody gave her instead of giving back. So uh, I'm hoping to see some improvement. We need to see some improvement, have to see some improvement. Or uh, th this just might be too much for her. But I'm hoping that's not the case. And uh, she'll, you know, uh, step up to the challenge and, st and start to s show some improvement. The girls you have coming in with the returning, do you anticipate adding anybody else? Uh, we're always looking. You know, uh, you know, we uh, might have one, one or two that decide to move on, look, look for some playing time elsewhere. Uh, you know, you get one chance of playing, and that's something that we've always talked about is, you know, I like to be honest with our players. I want them to know, hey, this is what you have to do to change if you want to play. You know, this, this is, these are the adjustments you have to make. And then, you know, for some, it, it just might be a little too hard. And, and, and that's, that's okay. Uh, but I, I don't want to give somebody false hope. So then all of a sudden you're at a place for two, three years, they're here and, and they don't get a play. And then all of a sudden they're upset because you weren't honest with them. Um, so we will continue to, to look and, and, and see what happens. But as, as of right now, we're uh, thrilled with the five freshmen that we have, have coming in and uh, really excited to adding them to our returning group. I know you, you won't really know until they're on campus and work out and all that kind of thing, but which ones do you think are ready for the most immediate impact? Well, I, I think all of them are, are going to have the opportunity to, to, come, to come here and compete for playing time. Uh, obviously, Asia Durr, with what she's been able to do, uh, you know, I, I think she's probably right now ahead of everybody with the impact that she can make for our team simply because of the way she can handle the basketball, shoots the ball, and is ab able to create her own shot. Uh, that's, that's one thing that we missed this past season was someone that, you know, when the shot clock was running out, could get themselves a clean look at the basket. Uh, you know, it, it's not saying that we didn't do a lot, a, a lot of good things, but that's one thing that we were not very strong at. Anything you learned about your program in the first season in the ACC that maybe you'll incorporate going forward? Or maybe what you learned about the league? You know what? It, it, 
it's a great league. Uh, reminds me a lot of the old Big East. Uh, I, I think that's one area that we were fortunate enough to be able to fall back on, especially for you know our senior class who had the opportunity to, to play in that league. Uh, it, it's you, you've got to come out ready, game in and game out. That's one thing that we preached our players about. You can't take anyone for granted. I don't care what their record is, because our league is so competitive that you've got Wake Forest who may have won three or four games, but we're down seven at half, I, I, I believe, against them and have to have a great second half to come back and win that game. Well, you've got Derek Hamby, who's a first-team all-conference player, who's, who, who's going to be a high draft pick that plays for them. So there, there is a lot of individual talent, even on the teams that might not have won the number of games they wanted to. There were individual players that could impact and take over a game if, if you allowed them. Were you surprised at all the All-American game stuff like that that Aaron didn't get in? Yeah, I, I was a little surprised. Uh, I, I thought Aaron had, had, has done a fantastic job this year. Uh, really enjoyed f following her and watching her play. You know, I, I think part of it is with the number of players in the state of, te uh, of Texas that, you know, she may have been o overlooked. But I know we're thrilled to have her as a part of our, our, our program, excited to have her come in and, and, and play as a, a, a freshman. You know, with her size, her ability to shoot the basketball, uh, we're, we're, we, we've got to work on some skills like we do with all of them. But there's no doubt in my mind she's going to come in here and make an immediate impact. What does it do for your program to have three in the McDonald's game tomorrow night on national television and be talking about your program and your class? No, I, I, I think it's great. You know, like I tell everybody, it's, you know, it's great to have that recognition coming out of high school. Uh, but now what are you going to do with it? You know, we've had some great players that have come through here and made a mark on our program who were not McDonald's All-Americans, were not high school All-Americans. You know, and that's what we talked to our, our players about. You know, you, you, you can't just sit there and say, hey, I'm a McDonald's All-American and think that's going to get you anywhere in college. You've got to put the work into it in college just like you did in high school to get that, on, that, that, that honor. Uh, but we're, we're thrilled because I think when you've got them talking about Louisville on a, na on a national stage, you know, it, it does nothing but help promote our program. I, I thought le uh, last night in that skills challenge in a three-point co contest, it, it, it was great for us. I mean, we, we, we got a lot of, of recognition from Asia out, out there shooting, being in the three-point contest, the skills contest. Uh, Tajikal also shot in, in the three-point contest. So whenever you can get your name out there on the national stage, it, it's always a good thing. When you, you played Dayton, you know UConn. Are you surprised that people this morning were saying that it was an upset that they were down at half? I mean, that, that's the headline more than, more than UConn won was that it was an upset because they were only they were, they, they were, and they were down at half. Well, you know, it, it, it's amazing. Day, 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 Dayton played extremely well. I thought Dayton had a great tournament run. What's scary is at one point, I think Dayton was 8 for 12 from the three-point line and down 10. I mean, that's, that's how good UConn is. That, that's what I try to explain to people. You know, I think they were 7 for 10 in the first half and up one. You know, if, if you're going to tell me I'm 7 for 10 from the three-point line against somebody in the first half, I'm thinking I'm up 12 or of uh, 15 points, but that's not that that uh, that's not the case. I, I thought Dayton did a great job of scoring with them, which is hard 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 to do. Uh, we we talked we talked about it here. You know, if if you want to be able to score, you've got to make open threes, which Dayton did, and then you've got to be able to shoot the ball from 15 to 18 feet, because it's hard to score in the paint. It, it's hard to get into the paint on UConn to score. Uh, but I thought Dayton did those two things in the first half. And then UConn made some uh, uh, adjustments. I thought they came out with a little more fire in the second half uh, and just kind of imposed their will on them. Schedule? Any cool trips? Schedule, uh, we're still working on that. I, I know we are, we are going to be, down, be going down to the uh, Gulf Coast 
tournament. I'm not exactly sure of the name, and, and, and looking forward to some really some really good games in that. Hopefully, that field will be announced here in the next month month or so. Uh, we'll have Cal co uh, 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 coming in here to play opening weekend. Uh, we're at. Kentucky again this season. Uh, we'll go down to Western Kentucky and play. Uh, looking to add a, a February game, uh, which hopefully we'll find something out about that in the next few weeks. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're excited about it. I think we've got a challenging schedule, but at the same time, one that's going to allow our freshmen to get their feet wet. Sean Tate talked about coaching or being interested in coaching Sarah Kansas State freshmen. Did you get a chance to talk to any of the seniors about their future and after school? Yeah, well, I actually met with all, all five of them uh, yesterday. And I know you've got Sarah, Shante, Bria, and Sharon are all going down to Tampa this weekend for an over, overseas combine that, 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 that's being run, uh, which will give them a chance for two days to showcase their abilities in front of some agents and some owners of some, you know, foreign teams. Because I know they all have ambitions of hopefully being able to go play overseas for a few years.